What if you could turn this into this? Or this? Well, you can with a wave folder. Stick around and we'll get into it. Hello there, folks. Cranky Old Cuber here. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to talk about the wave folder module and the modular synth kit I've been building. In a way, a wave folder does just what it says on the tin. It folds waves. Say you've got a plain old triangle or a sine. Pretty normal, kind of boring, but not a lot of sonic interest there, right? With a wave folder, we can take these basic waves and mangle them, which, as you probably guessed, alters the sound, and sometimes even in pleasing ways. So let's get it built up and I'll show you what it can do. All right, I've got the module built up and we've got it installed in the case right here where it goes. As you can see, it's got two inputs, a knob and an output, and that's pretty much it. Since this kit's VCO does not have a sine or a triangle output, we've only got a saw and a pulse, and those aren't as interesting in a wave folder. So what I'm gonna do is patch the output of this Pico VCO with a sine wave into the input then we'll put that on the scope. There's our sine wave on the scope. And we could change the tuning and make it smaller, bigger, whatever. Then I'm going to patch the output to the mixer. Now we can hear it. Turn that down for just a second. And then I'm going to patch our blue trace into there. So let's turn that up. It's already folding a little bit, even with the intensity knob all the way counterclockwise. So let's turn it up and see what we get.
There we go, we're getting additional folding. So that's a sine wave going through a folder. And so what it's doing is it's adding higher frequencies over tones. All right, we could get similar results with a triangle wave. So let me select a triangle wave on here. Okay, so let's listen to this uh, triangle going through the wave folder at the lowest intensity setting. I'm going to keep the volume down on this because it gets quite loud as we fold it. All right, let's go up to the highest intensity. Okay, so that is the highest intensity folding we can get on this triangle wave and it sounds pretty gnarly. All right, I'm going to turn it back up and we can take a look at how the sound changes when we go back to a sine wave. Okay, so that shows you kind of how the, the two waves differ. The way I look at it is the sine wave is rounder and it sounds rounder to me. Even when it's folded, we still have these round bits every so often. Okay, so let's take a square wave. We'll just take it out of our kit's VCO because we got a nice square. There's a square wave. As you can see, the wave folder is attenuating it a little bit, but it's not really changing the shape. So let's listen to it as we change it. So we're at minimum intensity when we're gonna go to max intensity. So as you can see, it doesn't really do a lot of changing of the shape. You can feed literally any signal into here and you'll probably get changes in the sound that may or may not be pleasing. Let's change the wave. Let's do something like that, okay? So this is our input wave. This is what it's doing to it on the output. And it sounds like this. All right, I'm gonna tune it up just a little bit. And I'm gonna start folding it and we'll see what we get. That makes it interesting and different. I don't know if that achieves anything that you would want to do. It seems to give it a little more presence, I guess, is a way to look at it. Anyway, as long as the sound it makes is something you like, go for it. One of the things that you definitely want to do is get a wave that has some rise and fall that's gradual. So square waves generally go up very rapidly and down very rapidly. And there's not much for this thing to work with, with the folding because it's so instant. And so a wave like this, it actually will do stuff too. Okay, so as I mentioned, 
the VCO in the kit does not make a triangle wave or a sine wave, but we do have this nifty input on the folder that will convert a sawtooth into a triangle. So let's take our sawtooth out of our kit's VCO and put it in here. And we'll put that on the oscilloscope. There's your sawtooth wave. Let's take a listen to the output of the saw, just to remind you. Okay, that's what a saw sounds like. Now, let's take that and put it through the wave folder and we get what's basically a triangle out. It's not a perfect triangle converter, but it's not bad and that looks pretty much like a triangle wave. Keep in mind, it's a DIY kit for learning and you can make some wonderful music and noises with the thing, but Moritz made some design compromises to keep the kit affordable and to keep from having to go into super complicated designs. So I would say this is doing pretty good. So let's listen to it and what it looks like when we fold our sawtooth converted to a triangle. It should sound very similar. So the folding isn't perfectly symmetrical uh, top to bottom. However, for changing the character of the sound, this works really, really well. So one quirk with this module is it doesn't perfectly reproduce the input signal. Like I, I expected it would reproduce the input signal exactly with the intensity turned all the way down. It does not. It looks like it is set up to begin folding a little bit down here. There might be things I could do to the circuit to fix this. On the other hand, it doesn't really matter. It's not a criticism. It's just something I want people to be aware of if they pick this module up. There may be variability in the circuit due to tolerance of the parts and such. And so it may be that uh, as Moritz built it, the parts he had were the perfect values to make it look basically the same coming out. Mine doesn't. And it's fine because the idea of this is to modify the sound. And if you want a pure sine wave or a pure triangle wave, don't run it through the wave folder. Just run it straight to what you want. A thing that I think that is missing from this module, and it looks like there was room for it. Uh, it may be a cost issue, but I would like to have a CV jack and an attenuator for the CV jack so that I could control this intensity knob with some other modulator, like, I don't know, an LFO or an envelope or, you know, any of that stuff. Well, you can't do that. Um, but what I'd like to be able to do is do rhythmic stuff like this. Especially since I like dubstep music and I feel like that would be a great way to do some of that wobbly stuff that you hear in dubstep music. Anyway, again, not a criticism. You can't have every feature on every module you ever wanted unless you design them yourself. Hopefully by now you've got a decent idea of what a wave folder is and some idea of how and why you might want to use it. Next time we'll look at the mixer in this kit. Mixers might seem mundane, but they have all kinds of uses beyond mixing audio signals. And this particular mixer also includes a unique feature, which we'll talk about next time. And with that, I think we've done enough for today. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you at the next video. Cheers.